Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, check one, two. I am just testing my mic. Uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. I do have the music volume up a little higher than I usually do, so you can confirm for me whether it's a little bit too loud. Um, and I'll be starting in approximately one minute and 30 seconds. Hello, happy Saturday. It's the coding train again. Here we are every Saturday, even when I said, I don't know when this was, was it? It was definitely at the start of January, I think, if not earlier. <laughs> I would no longer be live streaming on the weekends because the weekends is not a convenient time for me to live stream. And yet here we are again, another Saturday afternoon and I'm live streaming. It turns out, eh, it's not exactly a convenient time, but it is more convenient than the other times during the week that I thought might work out. Someday this will all change, um, but for now I am here on Saturdays. Actually, just to get this out of the way, the schedule is going to be quite light for the next couple months in terms of live streams. There's a lot of new content coming out on the channel, so you will get your fill of Coding Train without a doubt if you're interested in that. But in terms of the live streams, just to let you know, um, I will be live streaming next weekend, most likely, but that's like 50-50. Then I will 100% definitely be live streaming, put this in your calendar, on March 19th. It's not 100%, actually. Let's put that at like 90 to 95%. I have a, a guest coming, and I will soon put that as an event on the YouTube calendar of events. <laughs> Is there a YouTube calendar event? No, but I will make it a... A scheduled live stream on the channel so it will appear on um, the YouTube Coding Train homepage on YouTube. And then I am going to be out of town, not actually not really out of town, I'm still going to be in New York but I will not be um, in Brooklyn for a few weeks. So um, there won't be, unless something changes and I find some miraculous way with a good internet connection to live stream during that time, I will, there will be no streams between approximately March 20th and April 10th. Um, so, uh, so there will be a bit of a lull there, but lots of new content and, uh, you probably are aware, I want to say hi to folks in the chat and, um, see what's going on here, but you're probably aware the focus right now of the coding train is most definitely on, um, nature of code tutorials. So if you've just, if you haven't been around in a while, you're tuning in maybe for the first time ever or after a while and you haven't been following what's been going on the channel, if you go to the codingtrain.com learning nature of code and uh, you'll see this playlist of videos, all of which were completed uh, a year ago in the spring of 2020, then I had, I don't know if you know, if I don't know about what happened in the year 2020, a lot, let me just say, uh, kind of lost steam with this project, but I have firm Returned to it here in 2021, um, and all of the chapter three videos um, have been completed and published. And guess what? All of the chapter four videos, which is only four videos, four videos for chapter four, four being the only number in the English language that has the length is the number of letters in the word of the number itself. Did you know that? Interesting facts. By the way, I kind of want to just completely change the coding train to a channel called Facts About Numbers. 
<laughs> I, I've been sending these emails to my NYU course and I try to include a little like tidbit about like a number in them. And then I realized like, oh, I, lo I love this so much. Maybe I should go through my random number book and just uh, uh, just completely pivot. The content is just me. Uh, it's ASMR, facts about numbers, uh, reading on the coding train. Anyway, <laughs> I was saying chapter four, uh, particle systems, four new videos. They've all been recorded. It, it may take a, a little while for them to be publicly available on the channel. This is my small little plug that if you would like a sort of sneak preview of those as they're in process. So rough drafts and early versions I will share with um, members of the Coding Train in the Coding Train Discord. Now the Coding Train Discord, which I will press this button, is uh, hopefully it just appeared in the chat. Um, it's available to everyone. I encourage you to join. We have uh, a lot of new moderators. Shout out and thank you to the new moderators. Um, it's a place where hopefully it's welcoming and friendly, a family-friendly place where you can get um, help with your code. There's a lot of different help channels. I could just show you these things right now, but I'm just going to talk. Um, and certainly, if you're running into any issues on the Discord and you have ideas for things that you think we could do to improve it, and by improve it, I mean improve the sort of community vibe, the inclusive nature, what I hope and want for that Discord, um, please definitely like reach out to the moderation team. Um, um, yeah, so, um, Pratyush Roy in the chat is asking, um, that you're not on Discord because you are under 13. When you turn 13, please join. Absolutely. So I believe that the Discord, this is, um, you know, out of my hands, so to speak. Um, although, well, um, but the, the, um, terms of service for Discord are, um, you have to be 13 or older. Okay. Uh, um, what am I? I'm looking at the chat. So what's the deal with these live streams? If these are sequence tutorial videos that appear on the coding train, why am I here? I don't know, actually. I've kind of lost track of what the whole thing with the coding train is. Why I'm here. Oh, the, uh, I was plugging. I, I, I don't know. You tell me. Why am I here? Well, I would like to uh, engage and connect with the community to some small extent. By the way, I have a little bit of a problem. I've been kind of obsessively um, on Clubhouse, which is an audio-only um, social network. I think it's only iOS only, which is kind of ridiculous, but I assume that's just because I haven't had the time to develop it for other platforms yet. But I, I, on Clubhouse, about uh, half an hour ago now, it's at 12.40 p.m. Eastern, I started a room that said pre-coding train live stream chat. So I was up here like plugging in things. I thought, oh, anyone wants to come in, ask a question, offer a suggestion for the coding train's live stream. <laughs> Maybe they'll uh, pop in on Clubhouse and say hello. Nobody joined. Not one person joined. It sat there empty with just me for like five to ten minutes. And then I very, very sheepishly <laughs> cowered and clicked the leave quietly button. I left my own room that I had started and sat in by myself for five to minutes, ten minutes quietly. So anyway, if um um, um and Kobe is um is uh, offering some information in the chat about how to join um if you um once you reached a certain birthday. Okay. So, um, I forgot the other thing. So, so what do I want to, um, oh, and Simon is pointing out that it is invite only, iOS only, audio only. Yeah. So you do need an invite, you know, if you want an invite, I got a lot of invites. <laughs> Send you a clubhouse invite. Okay. Actually, if you get a clubhouse invite from me, it permanently says forever. Nominated by Daniel Schiffman. So, um, that's probably why no one joined. I have invites. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, anyway, I thought, you know, I try to do, I would like to do some more sort of like Q&A style stuff. And obviously I could do that on YouTube itself. Um, I could also, we have a whole Discord, which has probably all the capabilities, if not more, of what Clubhouse has. But I, I, the reason why I kind of got a little bit addicted to it is um, there's a couple podcasts that I listen to that I'm a fan of, and they were just having discussion rooms, and I was joining them and like really excited. And then there were some, a lot of, you know, it's, it's sort of like NFT and crypto discussion all the time, and I know nothing about that. I mean, part of me in a very, very sort of like, crude and uh, selfish way sees the NFT stuff and just starts to think, oh, could I sell like 
you know, little like clips of coding train videos as NFTs. Like, and then I'm like, what is there wrong with me and my like capitalist urges? But um, it's sort of interesting to follow at least what's happening in the art world and collecting art, digital art in particular, and NFTs. And I know nothing about it. So if you um, if you know stuff about that, <laughs> want to come into the Tony Drake Discord and educate me, I would love to hear. All right. So uh, as now, I think I've answered my own question. Why am I live streaming? Just to be here, ramble, talk, engage with the community, and work on tutorial adjacent projects. Um, so hopefully work on like nonsensical, useless projects. I actually, let me just mention something. Speaking of Clubhouse, I wasn't gonna do this, but now it's all connected. Let me go to, um, I, I should put this in a GitHub repo. So one of the podcasts that I listen to is called, um, I Know You Don't Know, hashtag I-D-Y-D-K. And to be honest, I don't listen to every episode because it's about a television show called Psych. And I haven't watched the show yet. And I keep thinking I'll watch it eventually and then listen to the episodes. But I, um, uh, the hosts were, I have a sort of fun game that they play, I guess in the TV show Psych. Let me see if I can find this. Um, and you can start to see where I'm going with this. Um, the TV show Psych, I believe there is a hidden pineapple in every episode. And um, they have a discussion on the show about... Uh, on the on, on the podcast about where is the pineapple, how pineapple ish is that particular image. And so I built a system using, you know, my knowledge of, pro I'm trying to use my knowledge of coding and algorithms and machine learning to make a difference in the world, people. And I thought, what else could I possibly do to make a difference than make a pineapple detection web page system for a uh, probably a podcast, uh, hopefully they're gonna have like a huge. They're gonna get the coding train bump now and have thousands of listeners. <laughs> but they're a new podcast. I'm assuming it's a small niche group. You know, I'm a niche. This is a niche YouTube channel. I have all these subscribers, but no one really watches the videos. <laughs> it's very interesting to me. I mean, lots of people do watch the videos. Don't get me wrong, but just um, <laughs> um but uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Anyway, so I worked on this. I'm going to show it to you because maybe I can turn this into a GitHub repo and take contributions for it. I'll just go to this one, which I think is the uh, webcam version of it. Um, you can see that I um, did a lot of work with my web de my web design skills to build this amazing website. Um, uh, are there psych fans? I, I hear, by the way, if you're a psych fan, you're called a psycho, right? That's like, you know, like if you're a fan of is there a name for a coding train fan, by the way? Like, I guess you're a, a, a passenger. No, that's that's not. No, no, you're a you're a choo chooian. Oh, and Terrence Zhu has just joined. Terrence Zhu, welcome to being. You could be the one, Terrence. Right now, you could decide what is the name that fans of the coding train call themselves. But. I've got to reveal that I'm wearing sweatpants. I walk over here to get my random number book because um, I most distinctly, by the way, I'm quite, quite pineapple-ish if I don't say so myself. Uh, Terrence, your random number, please write this down. There's absolutely no other way we could ever possibly remember this ever. <laughs> like, no computers or databases or anything near us that could possibly keep track of, of random numbers assigned to viewers, but your random number is on page 209, which is probably the page that I give everybody's random number, which is what it opens to. Um, and Austin is saying it looks like a late 90s page. Yes, that's that's the vibe I was going for. Um, <clears throat> uh, your random number on page 209, uh, line 10,445, 35,086. That is your random number. So um, what I did with this uh, particular, this is a teachable machine trained model. A pineapple is actually one of the categories in MobileNet. There's 1000 labels in the MobileNet machine learning uh, image classification model that I use in a lot of coding tutorials and examples. But using MobileNet on its own, it wasn't really picking up <laughs> Pineapples, unless they were, you know, prominently, obviously a pineapple, like right in front of the camera. So I kind of trained my own model using uh, uh, images from um, of pineapples as well as 
screenshots from the television show Psych with pineapples placed in them, like overlaid. I wrote a processing sketch that loads snapshots of the Psych TV show, puts pineapples in them, made a data. I should just be doing this during my live stream. It's such a fun project. A little did you know, this is what I was spending my evenings doing. Um, and uh, then took screenshots from the show that didn't have pineapples in them, trained the model, and now... Um, we can see, I know this is one of the things I was using to test fans. Karn is suggesting that fans of the coding train are unicorns or rainbows. Eh, that could work. Um, people in the chat I, are saying, please say my name. And I really appreciate your enthusiasm and desire. And I don't mind just like every once in a while reading one of them. Well, maybe I shouldn't even say that, but I would like to discourage people from asking that in the chat. It sort of fills up the chat with a lot of extraneous messages. And I will pull out and reference. So you're more likely to have me say your name if uh, if you post a, uh, a wonderful little quip or suggestion or chat message there. Um, so let's try. I know that it really like basically learned that yellow, the pineapples are yellow. You can see that. I've made a yellow detector. Um, I wonder if I just like take my hat off. Um, how, you know, I've got a, a mushroom here. Oh, come on. Can you hear that? This is my new sound effect. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, I don't know that I should um, do this right now. Maybe one of the um, coding train mods or um, a GitHub manager, people, I'm like making up titles for people. But if you have uh, access to make a new coding train repo, I'll put this sketch um, into, and actually the one, the one that I probably should start with is not the webcam one. This is meant to be used, although there's no reason why I couldn't have it do both. Um, pineapple. Uh, pineapple detection system. Is this it? Yeah, this is the one where you can drag and drop an image. So if I were to look for an image, let's actually look for a screenshot from Psych. Um, like, uh, let's use this. This is this is this is definitely I'm um, I'm using my time my live stream very wisely here. We're going to get to all sorts of productive, important projects. Let's just, uh, let's let's confirm, did I put it on the desktop? Yeah, let's drag this image in and we've got, yes, see, no pineapple in that image. Now, if I were to take that image <laughs> and I were to then, oh, that's such a small little image. Um, and then I were to uh, look for a pineapple And like, we'll paste it in and make it small. <laughs> like, he's got pineapples on his shirt now, okay? Now I'm saving this. Let's see how this changes it. Let's see if my model works the way I expect. 0.22% pineapple. There we go, 62% pineapple. This is how I've been spending my time. The thing is, though, I do. I don't know how this is where I ended up in my life, but I do get paid to teach actual college courses on this stuff. And I, I was working on this for the most part as a way to. Um, um, <clears throat> that I hope that this will be an example for my course in the fall. It'll be fun, you know. The students will enjoy it. They'll think I'm their really cool professor, teacher, person thing. All right, enough about Pineapple AI. Please, uh, you just go to Twitter. Twitter, uh, hashtag Pine... Oh, it's pi I, I forgot to say, it's not Pineapple AI. It's um, like if I go to Twitter and go to uh, hashtag uh, Pine AI poll. Its name is Pine AI poll. And I really actually just want to make a Twitter bot that you can... Oh, there we go. Good work, everybody. Let's just show your... Uh, Please hold. All right. I 
broke my own rule, which is not to be logged into my actual Twitter account on a live stream. But that's okay. Everything's okay. Uh, you know, it's just another day where Nazi is trending on Twitter. Thank you very much. Never opening up that trash website again. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Alright, back to back to today. So let me actually try to um, get um, a little bit of a co um, coding rail fan. A rail fan is a fan of a train, says Arnav. And Prathamesh is pointing out that my um, green screen is 99% pineapple. Oh, and David is a big fan of Psych. So David, please, <laughs> oh yeah, you can participate in this with me. Excellent. Uh, I, I, the worlds can collide. The uh, weird entertainment podcasting world that I like to just listen in on from time to time. Um, I have a whole other AI project that actually has quite, a, not a large audience, but a slightly larger audience than the pineapple AI that I'll bring to the coding train someday. Whew. Is there anybody here still watching? No, good. We're, 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 uh, this is a, a, oh my goodness. And guess who forgot to uh, say thank you? Uh, today's sponsor, <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant is a wonderful uh, website where if you would like to learn in an interactive way everything you need to make a pineapple AI, you actually could because they have a whole set of interactive courses um, that are step by step. Um, quizzes and learning modules um, that you can learn a whole variety of topics, almost all of which are connected to things that I do here on the coding train, math and science and physics and coding and geometry and AI. Um, you can go to brilliant.org slash coding train. You can actually sign up for free. Just signing up for free from that link uh, shows them that you found it from me. But um, if you want to unlock everything, all the courses and everything at Brilliant, uh, the first 200 subscribers will get 20% off. So I'll come and I'm going to look at a course that I'm doing right now. The course that I'm going through is one of the geometry ones, um, and I'll, I'll come back and look at that a little bit more later. Um, all right. <sighs> all right. So one, the, one of the, the first thing on my list today, and this can be, this is which is really important, and maybe what I will do is just go to my Rainbow Topics um, page, is that I have uh, traditionally, for however many years now, maybe two or three, um, made a video, a coding challenge for Pi Day. And some of these maybe I've already done. Some of them maybe I didn't, but I sort of, I've kind of exhausted a lot of the things that I know about that kind of maybe would make sense for Pi Day. Um, and it's also, it comes at a bad time for me because ultimately, you know, if, the, if we're like Pi Day were in June, although I guess I could do Tau Day. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't teaching uh, and I had more time to like work on the sort of speculative other topic videos, but I, I don't want to let it go without a video this year. And it, it, there could be something actually quite relevant to, um, you know, that comes out of like some of these recent videos that I've been doing about polar coordinates and simple harmonic motion and all that stuff. But here I am. It is just time for me to, um, um, and Pratyush is saying that pineapple is my favorite fruit. I actually don't really like pineapple that much. Um, let's see if anybody can guess my favorite fruit. I'm not sure I really know what my favorite fruit is. But if if we go back to the fruit that I used to always eat as a child, there's a, there's a famous story in my family. <laughs> I famously refused to eat at fast food restaurants as a child and uh, um, ate a bag of plums. Oh, I just gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> but I ate a bag of plums instead of the like, and my family did not go to fast food restaurants very often, but it was like on some sort of trip or something and everybody got horrible food poisoning and sick, but not me because I only ate the plums. Um, mango is a good one. Mwah! And also love the blueberry. Oh, the blueberry is a wonderful fruit. Um, but yeah, you, now you've all guessed plums because I already sailed. I don't know, maybe. Um, oh, and Austin, Tal Day. Austin, I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, welcome back, Austin. <laughs> Or maybe you've been around all this time and I just haven't noticed your name recently. All right. Um, so I need some ideas for Pi Day. So this is a, I don't, I don't know how well this is going to work, but um, put them in the chat. I'm going to, um, let's look for things that I've done already. Pi Day coding train. If I do this. Um, so I did, oh, I did a, a version of a video based on three blue, one browns. Um, uh, three blue, one browns. Um, 
video about the clacking. I don't know what else to call it right now. Sorry, I'm seeing a chat message. How about calculating pi the Archimedean way? One polygon touching a circle from inside, another from the outside, and the average length approaches the real circumference as they get more edges. Interesting. I like this idea. I did the first pi day challenge that I did was this one, which is uh, approximating um, the value of pi with the dart throwing method. What is the I'm not gonna be able to say this. And I, I do know this is just like not, for, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm familiar with this. Um, it's just not fresh in my memory and I'm sure I spelled it Archimedes way. Um, finding pi by Archimedes method, official website, approximating pi. All right, let's look at this. You know what? Guess what everybody? 13 WNET New York is my local station. Thank you very much. Not that I have any way of watching it but it is my local station. Okay, around 250 BC. Oh, I have to sneeze. Oh, okay, please hold. Yes, I am a very professional YouTube host here <laughs> who just shuts everything off to sneeze. I had a box of Kleenex the other day right here on the desk. I don't know where it is. The ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Well, that's the definition of pi. Um, so could I... A launch an interactive. All right, let's see what that is. <clears throat> ah. Oh, the um, uh, Simon is pointing out the factors in common. The chant and the. I I know that. Um, it was a long sneeze, indeed. I don't know why this interactive is not working. So there, I know what a channel that I'm a huge a fan of is Stand Up Maths, uh, Pi Calculate Dice Rolling. I mean, I don't know if this is yeah from a thousand random numbers. This is what I'm thinking of here. Hi, I'm Matt Parker, and for Pi Day this year, I am going to generate. 1,000 random numbers using these two dice, the first two of which are 31 and 27. So 31 and 27 do not share a factor in common. Well, they share one, the most pointless of all the factors, but we're ignoring that. All right, so, and so we say they are. This could be good because I need, one of the projects that I have on my list today is to digitize, and I don't actually have to do this because it already exists, but I want to digitize the sequence of random numbers that are in this book so that I can always use it as my random number generator. Um, so that I could certainly do. And then I would have to write some code that calculates the factors of every number and then determines if they are the same. I guess I could like experiment with this right now. So one of the things that I can do with my live streams is sort of um, tinker around with an idea. I got a haircut. You can't tell because I'm just wearing this hat, but all of a sudden, like, there's, like, hair all over me. Um, it's probably dog hair from Gloria. But um, what I could do is, uh, um, you know, how do I, what's an algorithm? Algorithm for determining the factors of a number. Uh, so, like, Stack Overflow will tell us. Oh, and um, Abe is pointing out that there's a new video that just came out from Matt Parker, which is pi, why pi to the pi to the pi to the pi could be an integer. Huh. Um, it is not random if you get it from a repeatable source. Yes, but there's a million of them. 
<laughs> I don't know. I could do, I could calculate pi with all 1 million, approximate pi with all 1 million numbers. I love this idea. So this is interesting. Um, but um, Simon is telling me to check out Euclid's um, algorithm. is an efficient method for um, computing the greatest common divisor of two integers, the largest number that divides them both without a remainder. Okay, this is excellent. It is an example of an algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step procedure for performing a calculation according to well-defined rules. This is one of the oldest algorithms. Okay, I'm loving this idea so far. So if I were to uh, summarize this, what? Am I not logged in? Okay, hold on. What? What is going on? Give me a second here. Um, oh, oh, no, no. There's a lot of stuff going on on Clubhouse right now. I might need to just turn this off and go listen to some interesting discussions. Um, all right, please hold. Oh my God, what kind of crazy password is this? Sure, why not? Whatever, I'll do anything you tell me to do. back uh, in the coding train topics repo and let's make a um... by the way I find <laughs> I find github's dark mode to be a little bit too dark for my taste I don't know why but I feel like I can't read the text um, so uh, all right yes um, now uh, pi day. 2021, uh, Euclid's are, are like cofactors, random numbers. Use all 1 million random numbers. So 500,000 pairs. Um, calculate the, um, is this what I'm looking for? The greatest common divisor. Um, this is good. Actually, this is one of the things that I've been helping my kids with in their math class. They're learning about how to reduce, um, fractions to their simplest form. Um, and then... So this is a good reference. Um, ah, where did I go? Ah, no, I closed it. I'm the worst. Okay, come on, local storage. Thank you. Okay, and now, um, I mean, this is a very mathy. Um, I'd have to think about what what visuals might go with this, but um, um, what visuals could go with this? But, um, and I'm not saying I'm definitely gonna do this, but here is an idea. So if you can actually right now, uh, first of all, you can reply to this thread if you have some suggestions or comments on this one, if I've gotten this sort of wrong, but you can right now um, file any issues here uh, you won't be able to add the Pi Day label, but um, I or another um, Coding Train um, GitHub org member will be able to do so. I'm going to collect um, lists of things, and probably if Pi Day is March, I need to record this video like next week. 
So get them in. Get your suggestions in, I would say, by Monday, if you can. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Anybody else got anything um, that you want to share as an idea for Pi Day before I move on? And one thing I do is like Pi Art. Well, that's like the art in pie. Yeah, I mean, I've done videos like this. I'm not video, I've, I've done examples like this. This is really nice. But, you know, I had this idea of graphing the um, the distribution of random numbers, of numbers in pi to see like if I do the first million, like how evenly distributed is it? These are lovely. Um, I like seeing these. Um, Great work, whoever made this, Visual Cinnamon. Um, a pie-based rose. Yeah, I mean, I've made videos about the Lisa Zhu curve and rose curves and all of these would be great to do. I mean, I could also do a coding challenge on a topic like this would, would likely I'd likely want to do one that I haven't done before that just makes use of um, polar coordinates or trigonometry and the number pi in some way that is like a celebration of pi day but not really like dealing with the number pi or its sequence of digits itself that's also something I'm crashing thunder is saying I like the idea of finding sequences or inf interesting information in the digits but guess what? That's what I did last year. So uh, peeking inside pi coding train. I'm pretty sure that was the video um, that I did last year, um, right around the time of the start of the global pandemic, uh, March 14th, 2020. And this was based on, I assume it'll be linked from this page. Um, this was based on the Fathom uh, Fathom Information Designs Project, uh, Peak Inside Pi. So I, I highly recommend that you check this out. By the way, I should be doing a better job of this, but links that I'm looking at in the live stream, um, I try to post those to the Coding Train Discord under the live category under links. So for example, here's one that I'm just sharing and here's one that I'm just sharing. So if you wanna pick up these links, um, you know, this is this YouTube video that I just shared. Um, um, you can uh, grab them there. But more importantly, boy, did I forget to share the link to my Pine AI Apple. Pine A Apple. What if you use the sequences to make the rows more intricate? So I could do a like a follow-up video that elaborates on the, the rose curve um, and makes some interesting variations of it. I'm definitely um, open to that idea. Oops, I forgot that I don't have this Distream chat. Oh, use the pendulum simulation. So Simon is saying, um, oh, I don't have this here anyway. Okay, sorry, I messed this up. Bear with me for a second. Clearing out a chat thing. Use the pendulum simulation to calculate pi. The formula for the period of a pendulum includes pi. I think there might be um, some issues with that in terms of how, how what my pendulum simulation actually does. What if I could get, I have an idea. What if I could get a physical pendulum, use computer vision to track the pendulum's the, the bob of the pendulum's location and read its period based on milli, millis and its physical location from the uh, camera and then calculate pi that way. That's a pretty interesting idea. Uh, I would even try that right now if I, because I have a bunch of cameras and things, but I don't think I have a pendulum anywhere. I suppose I could rig one up, um, but I like this idea. Oh, oh, Ash. Okay, Ash. Hello, hold on a second. Ash writes, um, I am learning coding on White Hat Jr. I'm very curious. One of the things that um, uh, I happen to look at from time to time is uh, links that 
referral links to like the P5JS website and other kind of creative coding websites that I'm involved with. Um, and um, White Hat Junior is just like a massive uh, uh, site that, I don't know if it's a massive site, but it just throws a lot of traffic to P5JS or editor.p5, the P5 web editor. So I'm curious for anyone who's, I don't know, I'm not familiar with what White Hat Junior is. Um, but I'm curious for anybody who's a user of it to kind of let me know a little bit about it. All right. And uh, Simon is telling me that a, I don't know why this is not working, but I'm not going to worry about it, that a 2.45 meter long pendulum will take pi seconds to complete a cycle. So maybe I could measure exactly that length. Why? I, I have like a nervous tick which is when I record videos or live stream, I start to like sneeze or my nose gets itchy. It's really like, it's very strange. Remember that's a thing that happens to other people or it's just me. All right, I would like to share, uh, where were we time-wise? 1.40 p.m. I would like to share some projects from you, the community of viewers of The Coding Train that you have made, that you have put your heart and soul into or at least a little bit of time into. You took the time to watch a video play with the code, make your own version. So this is a minute to the Coding Trade website. And I want to say thank you to you. I love to see these and, and use them for inspiration and share them with students and, and all sorts of content. So let's move on over to uh, codingtraining.com. I'm going to go to the challenges page. Um... And I would like to, so I have two methods by which that I look at community contributions. One is I spin a wheel <laughs> to pick a random one. I have a, just a random number generator-y thingy that will pick a random one. But I often also like to just look at, because there's not that many of them, uh, community contributions to recent coding challenges. So lucky for you, if you so feel so inclined, if you recently submitted a project to the Spring Force or... The, um, and thank you for that comment, Prathamesh, that you're sharing with me now. That's good for me to know. I was not aware. The music was quite loud. See, I knew the music was too loud, but I guess it's just different tracks have different volume. But let me turn that back uh, down now. Um, <clears throat> sorry, everybody. Too loud, too loud, too loud. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Why is that? Why is it that that song is so loud? Hold on, it's gonna be really quiet for a second. Try this again. Oh, weird. Now it's like gone. I wonder if I can, can I do? Ah, Q volume 50%. All right, so now, So this is at the correct volume. And now hopefully, please, mind your ears. I have set that other track to 50% volume, so it should be fine. But there's a small chance it's, I didn't do it correctly, it's gonna be too loud. Here we go. Hopefully this is good. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Um, all right, let's look at, um, let's go to the pendulum first. And let's take a look at some of these projects that people have submitted. Oh yeah, this is great. I'm so excited. I did So I haven't seen all of these. Some of these will be new, but some of them I have looked at already. And I did look at this pendulum on a cart um, project. So this is super interesting to me because this is a simulation of the sort of pendulum flipped upside down and balanced on a cart. And I forget if I can, um, oh yeah. And it's, I guess it's an algorithm for the cart to actually like balance itself. But this is something that would be <laughs> Roger saying, better yet, no sound. Sorry, I, I have to have the sound. It keeps me alive and full of energy. It makes me feel like I'm not just alone in an attic in Brooklyn, New York, talking to myself, which is in many ways what I'm doing. It's a little weird. <clears throat> 
Um, what I was saying was um, I've been looking for some examples for um, reinforcement style learning. And so the sort of like cart balancing a pole type style example um, is quite a good one. And so maybe there's something I could do with this. I have to admit, I don't know too much about this particular algorithm. It's PID controller. Um, so I don't um, like PID cart is uh, our controller. I don't know this terminology. Um, but uh, proportional integral derivative controller is a control loop mechanism employing feedback. Ah, interesting. So I would love to explore this in a future video. This would be, I would love to be able to figure this out myself, but not gonna happen right now. Thank you for that wonderful contribution. Uh, moving on, I'm going to go to the colorful pendulum in code pen by Indrayud Chakraborty. There we go. I love this. It's, we've got some nice um, trails going, a nice little beautiful red color pick for the pendulum. Um, it'd be interesting to sort of time it and see if we could approximate the number of pi, <laughs> approximate the, the, the number pi through this swinging pendulum. Um, one thing that I was, was going to suggest for people for an exercise that I think I might have forgotten to in the video is, can you make it so that you can catch the pendulum and drag it around and then let it go? Um, actually, in the nature of code example, it does have that code built into it. That's something you might consider. Thank you. I don't know why I have to press this thing twice every time. Why? I don't think it's working correctly. I was using it to replace this, but thank you for this wonderful pendulum simulation. Okay, next. Simple pendulum simulation using Python. And we've got a nice YouTube video that is um, showing us um, the results here. Uh, awesome. And this looks like that this particular simulation is using some real world measurements to uh, simulate the path the oscillation of a pendulum um, in Python. I wonder if there is a code, um, a source code is linked here. So we can see that here um, on, um, on GitHub itself. Cool, whoa, all right, awesome. Um, I'm not gonna go through this in a lot of detail right now, but it's fun to see. Okay, um, next up we have got the up, down, left, right by Josh Kenzer, and this was by Karen Kinariwala, Kin by the way, the previous one. Up, down, left, right. Whoa, I have not seen this one yet. Um, so one thing I should probably do, this is a little bit unfortunate. One thing that the um, web editor doesn't do very smartly, and I don't know the best way to handle it, is if, um, if the editor is set to high contrast mode, but um, the default sort of like text style is um, black. So it's very hard to, to read it. Let me just do show boxes. So that says show boxes and show pendulum, which is useful for me to just read out what it says anyway. So I guess show pendulums is actually show the lines. This is really, this, is, this has the makings of a really nice, perfect looping GIF. Um, I think there's a, that that I would really encourage you to think about as a way, and then you can NFT it. <laughs> I don't know. Is that the thing? I don't know how it works. Uh, I shouldn't just be so cavalier with my commentary. Um, but uh, you know, Bees and Bombs is a um, an artist that I'm a huge fan of, who makes um, among many other artists do this as well, but makes uh, um, looping gifts out of. Uh, simple uh, and sometimes quite complex algorithms like this one, but really nice choice of color and behavior and the way the pendulums all synchronize and meet up and create this geometric order and then separate out. I, I love this quite a bit. What does the slider do? I guess it's maybe like the speed or like a force. Oh, or it's like some kind of alpha. Yeah, oh, the slider is the alpha. Yeah, interesting. That's pretty wild. Just to zoom in on this for a second. That's quite beautiful, the smearing of the color. All right. Um, <clears throat> Botbit just asked, can you do G, J, K, Algo, and Runge, Kata, which I'm probably saying incorrectly sometime. I, would, I do want to explore those someday. Um, I always just use sort of like simple Euler integration, which is a sort of fancy term for the way that I model motion in uh, like P5JS animation programs and all the nature of code examples, but I would like to explore some more sophisticated versions. 
Um, okay. Now we've got a pendulum website by Sarvagya Singh. Oh, whoa. So first of all, what was that? I love this little animation. There's a little pendulum there. My pendulums, a simple pendulum, a Newton's cradle, and a double pendulum. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, use arrow keys to make it move. Do I click on each of these? Oh, and we get... Oh, so I can like... I can like apply a force to it with the arrow key. That's pretty cool. I love that. I love that. Now let's look at the Newton's cradle. I would love, this would be a great, um, this would be a lovely um, coding challenge video. Uh, See, so I feel like I wanna like click and drag these. Press arrow key to start. Oh, up. Whoa, these are like little springy ones. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh my God, what have I done? Oh, this is wild. Is this using um, like a like a physics engine like matter.js or is this all, yeah, it's using matter.js. So a matter.js is a physics engine that I use in, in, in different examples that were previously, but I haven't in a while. This is great. Uh, Okay, um, let's look at the double pendulum. Just curious if this is a double pendulum also with matter.js. Can I click or is this just more, um, oops, based on, yeah, this is also with matter.js. Cool, wonderful. Thank you for sharing this. Okay, now I know I've did that twice. This is also way too quiet. Maybe if I put it by the mic, you can really hear it. Uh, let us go now to um, the Spring Forces and see what we've got. We've got three contributions here. And I know that there have been other things that people have made. I really would love for you to um, submit them here because it's hard for me to pull up stuff from Discord or Twitter or whatever. So I, I love for you to share your things that you make with me through other platforms. But this is the central location to collect everything that I might look at on a given live stream. Okay, grab any spring particle by Galaton. Cool. Oh, can I? This is very similar uh, visually, at least to the example. Oh, but I can grab any part of it. Oh, that's wild. So that's the change. Like I can just grab over here. Ooh, very springy. <laughs> so definitely some of the things I need to, I should probably work on with my particular implementation is keeping things a little bit more um, uh, a little less chaotic. Uh, all right. Thank you for that. Um, Spring Force Contribution Grass by Leonardo. Uh, this one I have not seen. Oh, cool. So this looks like what it must be is it's just like my, oh, this is so, oh, oh, mwah, this is really awesome. So I'm just totally speculating here. But I think what's being done here is this is literally my connected spring example. It might not be, but, um, um, and so if you think about that soft string hanging down and you flipped it so that maybe the sort of like pseudo gravity force is pointing upwards, and then maybe there's like some forces, some Perlin noise like forces pushing it left and right arbitrarily or just moving the top manually and all the sort of like springy connections are undulating and squiggling around. And then even though this might be a sort of, you know, visualized in the literal way as like circle line, circle line, by having these strokes of, of uh, sequentially smaller widths, um, you really get this like seaweed, underwater, grass, plant form, like quality. Oh, and Abe is asking, will you also take a look at the contributions of the NOC series? I actually wasn't planning on that because I was thinking I'm sort of focused on just looking at the last two videos, but um, sure, I would love to check out, um, uh, particularly Abe, if there was one of yours that you uh, recently submitted that you want me to take a look at, I would certainly, or anybody else in the ch who's watching in the chat that submitted to those videos, um, please let me know. I'm, I almost don't want to look at the code because 
uh, um, it's just so um, beautiful on its own without even unpacking what's below it, but I, I can't resist. So the grass looks like this is like what I did um, with a very low K. That seems to be something different. Um, there's also a wind force, which is new. Let's see, and the wind is just a random amount every time. That's interesting. So because if the wind is small enough and it's random every time, it's not gonna like go crazy like this because it's just a little push in one way or the other. So you randomly get a few pushes in one direction, it'll start to go that way, then it might slow back, go back, that's great. Um, applying the force wind, and this looks, and I, I think the secret here is just really thoughtful rendering. Um, I don't know where that happens. Really thoughtful rendering and of uh, just clever uh, tuning of the values and, and adding the wind, obviously. So let's look for where is the rendering happening? I'm just curious. Uh, grass update. Particle update. Spring show. So it's in the show function of the spring and it has a stroke weight. That stroke weight changes and is passed in during the loop. Ah, this is such a very clever way of doing this. So like this dot total minus I. So if this if there's 10 springs, the first one is thickness 10, then nine, then eight, then seven, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Simon has shared something for me to click on that um, it was a collaboration between him and Abe. Let me grab that real quick. Um, and come back to it. Are we at break time yet? Yeah, we're just about break time. I gotta, I, uh, come, I'm gonna take a break in a minute here. Whoa. Oh, this is because I was like, what kind of crazy insane code did you all write? And I realized, oh, this is just the open simplex noise implementation. <laughs> okay, let's run this. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So we've got oscillating particles, changes in colors. Actually, something that I want to, if, if you'll indul all indulge me for a second, I want to explore something that this reminds me of. Um, so thank you for creating this um, uh, wonderful sketch. I like how you're using a JavaScript object for like settings. That's kind of like a cool little trick. And I could also imagine you loading those from like a JSON file or something, where you've got like a configuration for any particular visualization. Um, but what I actually, I, if you'll all indulge me for a second, I want to look at, uh, the video tutorial that I recorded on Friday was about how to use an image texture in P5.js with a particle system to create a flame-like effect. And it was my expectation, and let me do a let me duplicate this. And when I, I was trying to do this when I was recording the video itself, that if I were to type WebGL and use the WebGL renderer, I would see exactly the same thing. Um, would see exactly the same thing, but maybe I would be able to get higher performance out of it, even though this is a 2D system, just to use the hardware acceleration of the uh, WebGL implementation in the browser itself. But when I ran this, I see nothing and I see no error. So I wanted to try to figure this out. So let me just see, I'm just gonna, um, Comment out everything. Like, where is the bug? So first, let me just draw that image. Okay, so, so there's the image. Um, and if I do, sorry, it's, if I do background zero, there, that's the image. Now, if I change this to WebGL, I think I just figured out, oh, it's, the, oh, well, that's a big issue. Oh, that's all it is, actually. Oh, my goodness. I'm such a, I was going to say dumb dumb, but this is, I'm not, because this is the mistake we all make and forget and do. I forgot that the um, point of origin in WebGL render is the center. So what if I just like do something which is probably not the best idea, but just, oh, like, hold on, do this. Move it back. Okay, great, there we go. So now I think, oh, is this, I could have included this in the video. Maybe I'll add an addendum to it. Um, let's just see if this now works. Yeah, 
Yeah, but why am I not seeing the ad the additive blending? So why is blend mode add in WebGL? I must need something different. Huh. Oh, but this is a good because this ran super, super slow. Uh, let me just go for a second to the particle and just put the tint back to 255 just for a second. So this is a smoky like effect. Um, and if I go back to the sketch, um, hmm, I'm getting some, I can look at this later. Um, if I go back to the sketch, let me take out blend mode add. So this ran really, really slow. So let me take out WebGL. It still looks kind of different, it's so strange. Um, um, and let me, I'm sorry, I'm thinking here. I'm also getting messages that I'm reading, <laughs> direct messages on another platform, so apologies for that. Um, okay, let's put back WebGL. No, no, this is what I wanna do. If I go and just comment this out. What I wanted to look at is if I change emit to five, you can see the frame rate here is now quite slow. It's running quite slow. Oh, the issue is maybe the clear? Okay, I'll, I'll investigate that. I needed clear in with the additive blending, not in WebGL, but that could be an issue. So what I first thing I wanna test is just, if I add WebGL here, yeah, so this is awesome. Super fast. Okay, the WebGL render is super fast now. Uh, let me get, oh, I have the background on. That's, oh yeah, or the clear on. Hmm. No, that shouldn't matter. Uh, hold on. Yeah, no, I want background. Let me take out clear for a second. Same thing. Now, I'm in WebGL. You know, why is it? I think there's a Z, a layering issue also. That the transparency that I have to consider. Yeah. So this this I this I need to figure out like why I've got great performance but what's wrong with um what's wrong with the blending. And I suppose a Google search is probably not going to uh 3D. Okay, oh wait. Subtract so blend mode supposedly, okay. Oh, most of these only work. No, but these say 2D. Add should work with WebGL according to the reference. Another thing to just make sure is that I am using, yeah, I'm using the newest version of P5. So I'm gonna have to investigate this more later. I wanted to see if there was like a quick way that I could figure this out because I love the performance that I'm getting out of this now. Um, add only works for 2D, really? All right, let's try one of the ones that specifically says 3D. Uh, like subtract. So that's add, let's try subtract. <laughs> well, if I'm subtracting, I'm not getting anything is the issue. Well, there we go, interesting. Oh, hold on, I think I have an idea. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. If I'm subtracting, I can do it that way. <laughs> uh, and then, do I? and I don't even need the clear. Clear doesn't do anything, does it? So that's pretty interesting. Could I invert this now? <laughs> Like watch, could I use filter 
inverse or invert. I don't know that that works in WebGL. No, it cannot. Uh, that's crazy. Fascinating. So how, why, 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 why is add, I mean, add should really work. So let me see, uh, WebGL additive blending. No, I want, I want really just the WebGL. So I wonder if I can like sort of break into the lower level WebGL code. Then, and I would say this is a bug probably in um, P5. Yeah. This to me feels like a bug, but I'm glad to see this because this is pretty interesting to me. Now, if I were to, I think I can get some color out of this by going into the particle. There we go, kind of like that. Oh, I forgot, it's, it's the opposite if I'm subtracting. It's kind of interesting. Um, Well, I'm pleased to see that I've gotten somewhere with this. I think I should try to do uh, investigate this further to see if there's actually a bug in P5 itself. To me, it feels like there is because how could how could add? I mean, in, broadly speaking, forget about what P5 has chosen to implement or not. Um, but broadly speaking, um, if you could do a kind of subtract blend in the web in in native webgl in the browser then there's no reason why the an add blend wouldn't be possible um, and additive blending is also one of the most common techniques um, in computer graphics in terms of creating fiery glowy like effects that i have a feeling this is um an error um austin is telling me to try screen okay And I'll have to change the background then to zero. Oh, look at that. Screen. Interesting. What is screen? So now, are you telling me that uh, Uh, what I'm losing, I've lost the alpha though. Or is it just that my numbers are so high? Or do I need the clear? No, I have clear. The clear shouldn't really matter. So why am I not getting like it's uh, the fade? Why am I not getting the this? I wonder if I should actually use the texture. Um. A one minus a times b. Um, this is pretty interesting though to see. Uh, I mean, this is kind of a nice effect also, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Prothamesh is asking about the live captions. Yeah, so I did an experiment where I was getting the live captions from a different service last week, and I really liked it. And I've been working on trying to get that directly into OBS, and I wasn't able to get it to work yet. Um, so for today, I'm just using, the unfortunately, the automated live captions from YouTube. Those should be enabled. 
Um, but um, and if if um, anybody's interested in helping me with getting um, sort of the a some sort of API working between, uh, I would I would love to connect offline about that because I would like to be able to get a better captioning service. Um, enable alpha for the renderer. Yeah, that is often true. Um, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to move on from this because um, I only have till three o'clock and I do want to get to some other things that I want to do today. I also need to take a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. Can I do a drum roll for the sponsor while I'm pressing buttons and getting things set up? Brilliant. All right. What is brilliant? This is brilliant, and maybe I'm going to take away this for a second. This is the Brilliant website. It is a website. Um, I would say what I want to show you, it's a website. Wow, isn't that like such a brilliant characterization? It's a website which is full of learning potential and possibilities. If you like the content that I do on the coding train, algorithms, visualizations, math, physics, the number pi, geometry, infinity, AI and neural networks, programming. If you like all that stuff, I think you might, I think you would enjoy um, uh, Brilliant. Brilliant is, uh, and, and the thing that I'm really trying to do with Brilliant, which is new, is I'm trying to think of it as something that I can build into my daily, or more likely here for me, the way my life works, weekly routine. So I've set a goal for myself to try to do a lesson from a course, um, one lesson, um, every week. Let me just pull up here. I want to make sure I had some other notes of things that I wanted to sort of say um, say about Brilliant just to uh, make sure that I'm hitting all the um, important points. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, one of the things that I, as a teacher, I'm really trying to find ways to inspire um, the a love of learning and the fun of learning. And so, you know, sometimes sort of often traditional ways of learning through kind of tests and memorization um, don't, can really, um, they're really kind of a downer in terms of um, getting that love of learning. And so for me, um, making video tutorials, playing around, engaging with the community is one way, and also having, uh, going through interactive lessons, which that's have forums and discussions uh, and lots of clever, fun, uh, visual ways of, and written ways of learning things has really been, uh, really increased the sort of like fun. And the other thing is there's a lot of topics here that I don't explore. Um, cryptocurrency is one, quantum computing is another. So there, there's, if you wanna join me and a community of 8 million learners and educators today, um, all you have to do is go to um, brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, you can sign up for free just through that, um, but you also, to unlock everything on the website, um, the first 200 subscribers uh, to do so through that link will get 20% off. So the course that I was doing, um, I don't know why it's not showing up to me here immediately. I think I was, was it Beautiful Geometry? Continue course. Yeah, this is the one that I've been working on. I think I'm on lesson two. Yeah. So I'm on lesson two. I've done lesson one already. And my goal, hopefully if you see me next week, <laughs> check with me. Am I on to lesson four? Did you guys hear that car alarm going off, by the way? That's always a lovely thing to happen. While you know, Welcome to New York City people. Um, so let's see, I'm going to like work through some of these problems. The other thing about this, to be perfectly honest, for me, one of the things I like about Brilliant is I get lots of ideas for coding tutorials that I want to make. Um, all right. So what fraction of this large square has been shaded red? Okay. Well, I can say that it's more than a quarter, right? Because this is a quarter right here. So this is one eighth. So a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth. So this is some kind of sequence that I guess when it goes to infinity, going to infinity, add, in, add infinitum is Latin meaning to infinity. It's approaching what? And so these lessons here, um, Simon is telling me, he's an avid, brilliant user I know, is telling me that these lessons are called quizzes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what is this approach? Um, I, and I guess I could just like use P5 for a second. I could use a calculator. But if I were to say like in P5 for a second, um, like if I were to say like four, let I equal zero, I is less than like 100, I plus plus. And I'm gonna start with the sum, which is 0 0.25. 
sum plus um, plus equal itself uh, divided by two, right? Divided by four. Oh, that wasn't one eighth. Yeah, it is. No, no, times two. <laughs> oh, I'm so lost. If that's one, let me look back at this. This is one fourth. That's one sixteenth. One sixteenth. That is not one eighth. That's one sixteenth because it's one fourth of one fourth. One sixteenth. So that was right. I said that wrong. Sum uh, divided by four. And console log, if I do that 100 times, what do I get? And yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to add the whole. Okay, hold on. Sum. Okay. I need a start is, I don't think I'm going to get through this whole lesson today. <laughs> oh, and you can't see my code. Oh, I'm the worst. Um, sorry about that, everybody. Let me move this over. Good thing it was, it's okay. My code was like terrible anyway, because it wasn't right. So what I'm doing is I have a sum. I'm starting with zero. Sum plus equal, and I'm just going to say value. Sum plus equal that value. Then value times equals a quarter. And then keep adding it together and together. together. Let's just do that 100 times to stand in for infinity. Aha! Point three 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 one third. <laughs> I don't have the chat open anymore, so people are probably yelling at me. Yeah, one third uh, plus one fourth to the power of number of inches. This is a geometric series. Okay, um, Austin's right on every scale. The red square is one third of the blue squares. That's um, okay. That's actually a great way of thinking about it. That totally makes sense. Um, so let me go back to the brilliant uh, website. I'm gonna confidently click one third. I'm gonna hit submit. I got this right, 52%. By the way, I want to let you know that I get this stuff wrong. I don't know what, I was going to say at least a quarter of the time, if not more. And so to me, uh, the, and, and I always love the feedback it gives me when I get it wrong because um, it's like very positive and affirming. And I think like that's part of the learning process is getting it wrong. And then I'm always, every time I click on these explanations because I like to see what it says. The figure can be thought of as a series of progressively smaller up and down L shapes, each one with a dimension half of that of the previous one. Each interval shape has one red square and two blue squares uh, for a total of three squares. So the red makes up one third of each L shape. So that would have been, a, that's an, an Austin in the chat said that, that would have been a great way um, to think about it. For E day next year, says Brayden, you should calculate E. What day would E day be? February something? Um, I wish I could say that it hadn't been several years since I touched a geometric series. So this could be actually an approach that I take, a geometric series to cal I think, oh, I did this one. I did a geometric series for calculating pi. Which, what was that one called? Um, Leibniz formula. Yeah, I did that on the coding train. Leibniz coding train. So this is one I did another year, the Leibniz formula as a method for approximating pi. So um, wonderful. All right. And Austin just saw it intuitively, which is always great to hear. Okay. I, I would like to, uh, so I'm going to, um, you know, keep me honest here, folks. Tweet at me, message me in the Discord. Uh, let me know. Did I finish my lesson two later today? I'm going to go through and finish this on my own. My goal, I'm trying to have a goal of doing one more lesson per week. I feel like if I can get through all the courses on Brilliant uh, by doing one, one lesson or one quiz per week, that I'll have had a lot of new ideas and things to be teaching and doing on the coding train. Um, just to mention a couple other courses, um, uh, if you want to learn Python, there's a whole course programming with Python, which is an interactive code editor. That's one that um, I've spent some time with that's really terrific. And then a good companion piece to the coding train um, is also this uh, neural networks um, and AI, oh, just this, uh, this course about neural networks um, on the Brilliant website. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring these live streams. Uh, it really helps keep the... the um, the engine's running here on the coding train. Um, I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna take a short break. And if you haven't signed up for Brilliant during this uh, break, I would uh, highly encourage you to head to brilliant.org slash coding train. And I will be back in hopefully less than five minutes.
Just want to briefly drop in to acknowledge the message from Woshbot. Thank you so much. <laughs> I happen to be taking a break, but I, I see your wonderful, a kind message. And um, the enthusiasm of viewers like you is really what keeps me going. So thank you so much. back in just a few minutes. Uh, I'm not a few minutes, sorry, coming back in just like 30 seconds, sorry. a lot of energy to keep going to these live streams. I don't like sitting during them. This is my new not permanent setup, but uh, I definitely prefer the get up and walking and moving around setup that I have where I record the tutorials. But I'm enjoying this. Uh, I had a lot of energy at the start and I'm starting to fade. But I do have some a sort of like, and I feel like I, I also feel like in a way, this is like what I want the live streams to be, which is just a hangout session. Um, I think maybe it's actually a little less appealing to some of the audience who would much rather just see me like working on like building Tetris basically in a two hour live stream, which that kind of thing gets requested a lot. Um, and I do aspire to do that. Actually, Tetris, funny to mention that, is something that I really have high on my list now. Of, um, I don't know if that should be like a multi-part coding series or just something I do in the live stream. 
But um, I don't know. So your feedback is welcome. How to make, um, you know, my focus right now is really on the tutorial videos that I'm doing. Um, and then I think I will pivot, hopefully, come around um, April or May um, to being able to do some other content. But um, if you have sort of thoughts or feedback about what uh, what you like about the videos I release versus the live streams and how to, um, you know, um, how it's all feeling for you, um, it'd be great to hear. I mean, it's interesting. I have finally now separated the live streams from the produced sequence tutorials and coding challenge videos. So before it was all the same thing um, where I would, my live stream was really just a live stream of my recording session. Now I do those recording sessions. I still do actually stream those for members to sort of like tune into to like help give me feedback, but they're much more of like an actual recording session with no community segments. Um, and um, Jadwat says plan. The comment I see in the chat is a plan. And yeah, so I'm often wondering, do I need more of a plan? So anyway, your feedback is welcome. I'm, I'm not gonna be doing that much live streaming to be perfectly honest in the next couple months. Um, there's gonna be two more hopefully in March, one or two more in March. One will be with a guest. Um, and, then, and then I'm just I'm taking a few weeks off. And Alex, subscribe to Brilliant. That's so nice. Glad to hear. All right, um, I've lost the live, the Coding Train member chat. There it is, I've got it back. Um, is this the end already? Guess what, it's not. <laughs> I'm off to do one more thing. And I had a kind of longer list. Uh, but oh, just as a reminder, if you have um, ideas for, and thank you to Brilliant for the sponsorship. Um, if you have ideas for Pi Day videos, please post those in Discord or in the GitHub repo. Um, someone can maybe share that um, in, the, in the chat. Night Sky writes, longer beard should make the audience focus better. Interesting, interesting. There's, there, by the way, there's like a period of time somewhere in the sort of like, um, you know, beginning of quarantine. We're still really in quarantine here. Um, where my beard had gotten, I never had gotten that long. I saw, a, I saw like an image of me from one of those live streams and I was like shocked because it didn't seem that crazy to me at the time, but like, whoa, it had gotten really crazy. Um, all right, so here's the thing that I need to do. <laughs> need is a sort of interesting word choice of mine there. I mean, I, I, I don't know really why I need to do this, but um, I'm going to go here. So it, all, all you, you know, if you've been a coding train viewer for a while, or even recently for a short while, that I have an obsession with this book, A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal, De Normal Deviates. I'm still looking for an original print of this book that is fully intact with every page. It will be my prized possession if I can ever track down a copy. Um, um, but, um, anyway, I have this version and I, and I'm, I'm working on this project where I'm laser etching and I really should bring the strain whistle that has the actual test laser etch on it, laser etching a random walk pattern onto train whistles and sending them as gifts to members of the coding train. Um, and I, I don't know, Austin, is that question for me? <laughs> Because definitely doing more server side stuff recently, and I I've often get the feedback people like, "Why are you doing all this database and blah 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 node stuff?" Um, 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 so I'm reading I'm reading the chat at the same time while I'm talking. So I think for the authenticity, the total and pure beautiful authenticity of these train whistles, and for other things that I want to do, like perhaps this Pi Day video. I would like to have access to the random number sequence of 100 million digits that is in this book in a, I don't know what, what I should put it in, a JSON file, a text file, a binary file, I'll make a whole web API, I'm not sure. But, so, but let me download some of these. Data file, well this is actually all I want. I spent a lot of time talking about this, oh, only to reveal that da, da, here it is, exactly what I need, the one million, the table of random digits in plain form. So what's in these other ones? This is in PDF. 
Anyway, I'm just going to download this one. Let us open it up. Let me open it in, um, just put it on the desktop here and go to uh, terminal. What was it called? Digits.txt. And there we go. Oh, interesting. This is actually in the file. So I'm gonna have to do some parsing of this. So the other thing about this, right now I remember why I wanna do this. Because I ultimately, I have space, by the way, <laughs> for 1 million, I mean, that'll be, I don't know what I'm going to do if I ever have 1 million people join as a member of the coding train, but they're 1 million spots, basically, right? I, want, I would like to produce all 1 million of these train whistles eventually. Oh, oh, that could be kind of awesome. Okay, what if it's like every one was unique? Okay, this is cool. This is cool. Okay, I'm totally, I love this. I love this. Okay. So first things first, let's just do an exploratory session for a moment where um, I am going to load this into the Discord bot that I've been working on. Like ultimately in some sense, I wanna make this a separate project, like the random number sequence API project or member coding train member database project. But let's wrap it into the Discord bot for a second. So I'm going to go to very convenient. And I know that I said I was going to look at the live poll today. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm the worst. Um, I'm the worst. Okay. So I'm in the image generation. I can't remember where I left this off. Maybe somebody can remember. Discord, bot, choo-choo. Um, all right. Did I merge this branch? Pull request. Oh, oh, I've had some. Oh, this is the image generation. So why didn't I merge this? I don't know. I see no reason not to. <laughs> I'm about working this branch a little bit longer. So I'm sort of remember, I'm gonna go to glitch for a second where I actually have the bot. And my very, very clever and super amazing way of disabling the bot is to um, comment out the code. So this is the actual deployment of Choo Choo Bot, which is running on Glitch. I should probably, I love Glitch and I think it makes sense for a lot of things that I do, <laughs> but maybe the Discord bot actually should be deployed somewhere else. Um, so now if I, let's just see if I'm in the right place here. Um, if I run it, what? Oh, I forgot. I was trying to, I forgot that I was in a speculative place. <laughs> oh, right. And fun planet showed me how to do this. I never follow up on this stuff. I'm the worst. I got to get to the summer where I don't have like other work I have to do all week in between live streams <laughs> and I can like follow up and remember what I've done. So hold on, hold on everybody. Uh, let me, let me open up this. Pro I'm, I'm going to get there. If you will just be patient with me. Um, I'm going to go to generate.js and remove require P5, which is all I need to do. I think actually, I think I just left that in there. There we go. Great. So now I think if I go to, um, discord, is this only, I don't, did I remove the idea of it running only in one channel? Um, so where's my commands.js? No, but let me take that out. Um, so I'm just going to use my, a channel where only I have permission in, I think. We'll see if this works. So I'm going to Discord. And I'm just going to use this channel. Like, uh, I think if I do this command. I don't have the permissions. All right. Can somebody please... <laughs> Oh, Fun Planet, there you are, you're watching. Oh, Fun Planet, thank you so much for all of those. I really like following, I'm so excited about uh, that. And I was like, I wanna make actually, and, and I would love to collaborate on this, or if you just wanna like go for it, I will really support and champion you. But I wanted to make a li node library that was not, 
that was like a node p5 library that allowed you to do p5 in node but didn't actually have um well either had that didn't have i don't know how to best do this i didn't want to like change the p5 code itself I want this to be a wrapper of some additional code so that as the P5 library grows and changes over time, it can always just stay in sync with it, but we're not, um, so that's that's kind of my um, my plan. So um, uh, did I vamp long enough? Is there somebody who's a mod here um, who, can, um, who can fix the, um, and maybe I'll just do it myself. I'm gonna try to fix the permissions of the bot testing channel. Um, so how do I do that? Um, um, uh, channel, edit channel, permissions, advanced permissions is what I want. Um, everyone, see, I don't know how to do this quickly. Can, I'm going to make everyone not be able to send messages. I think this is fine. I think that might've been enough. Somebody can hopefully fix it for me, but I'm back. So I'm in this channel, which should have the bot going. And that was running right from here. Uh, should I call it generate? Was it random walk? Oh yeah, there we go. Great. I don't see any console logging happens, which makes me nervous. <laughs> like... I don't, I seriously don't have like a console log. Uh, let's just. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm in the right code. My bot is running. So this is what I, sorry for that. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got 20 minutes here to do. Um, uh, to do about what I want to do. So I'm going to take this file, digits.txt. I am going to put it into uh, Discord bot choo choo commands. Mm, the question is where to store it. Well, let's just store it here in the root directory for right now. Is this, by the way, are these tabs? Not sure. And then. Um, Let's go to uh, the code. Um, I can close this. So I've got the digits here. Now in this command, I do want the file system. And I wanna say uh, digits equals, or I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say raw digits equals file system read file sync. How do I do this? Like something like this? If I want to go back one directory, <laughs> I should know this kind of stuff. Um, and then and then I want to say, uh, ah, UTF-8. Okay, so I'm loading the raw digits. Need a little bit more room for the code here. Then um, let's just see if that works. Okay, that worked. So there's all the raw digits. Now I need to um, now I need to chop this up to make it an array of all the digits. But I need to. So I guess like. Like what if I do split and I split it by a regular expression, which is just any white space? Um, let's see what I get. Okay, great. So then how do I get rid of all of the uh, row numbers, which I don't need? So if there are in the digits file, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So every, so zero, nine, I'm sorry, zero, 10, 20. If the index modulus 10 is zero, so should I use filter?
I'll call it random. Digits filter. Is there like, can I, in the filter function, can I get an index? So I want to filter out, or is this, or is this all that I want to keep? So I'm using this higher order JavaScript function. And I have no idea if this will work to basically filter out everything. Um, oh, I could split with the line break, says Arnob. That's a smart idea. So, but let's see if this works. This I want to filter out every tenth element. Um, let's see if this works. I also could use the spaces between the row number and the data. Yeah, there's lots of other ways I could do this. Uh, did that work? Doesn't seem like it. Yes, does not, does not equal zero, oh, hold on. Oh, I had console log digits still in there. So maybe that did work. Or if it did, it did the, hold on. I think that might've, hold on. Console log random dot length. One hundred ninety-eight thousand. That is not right. Twenty-two thousand. Interesting. I wonder if, as I'm filtering it, if the. Uh... All right. Well, let's split it up. Let's let's do it. Um, let's do rows. Split by rows. I'm, and I can concat. All right. Let's try this. Okay. That kind of seems right. Right, okay. So now what if I, uh, rows, um, so for every row of rows, um, digits equals row dot split by any number of spaces and then uh, splice the first one out. There's 11, index modulus 11. There's 11? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, but because the number is there, it's 11. Oh, so that would have totally worked. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Oh, I, just, I don't know why I couldn't, like my brain couldn't make that happen. Uh, um, hold on, I'm gonna keep this. Because I like what I'm... Uh, people were saying that to me in the chat. And I was not, I was just like, what? That's weird. That's not right. I just like completely ignored it, but uh, I just see it. Uh, thank you, Arnav, for like being very clear about that. Let's, okay. So this should be, and I just want to save this other way that I was trying it. Um, so let's see if this gets it to me. Uh, Digits should be an S. Oops, I've kind of missed some things here. There we go. 200,000. Twenty thousand and one. That's weird. Does um, a line break not count as white space? It's definitely not equals. 
Did I download the wrong file? Did I download the wrong file? Why are there only, why are there 220,001 numbers and not 1 million? This. All right, hold on. Let's go back to my rows splitting for a second. Do I, I don't need a G there with split, do I? For global? Uh-oh, I hear my, I have a feeling cooking class, baking class has ended. It's digits, not nums. So weird, okay, hold on. Let me, let me go back to my more manual way of doing this. Twenty thousand, yeah. It's a million digits. It's never been a million numbers. I've been wrong this whole time, my whole life. I've completely misunderstood this book, and I never bothered to check. Is this about this? I'm so confused. I got, hold on a sec. There are 200,000 numbers. All this time I could have read this, my whole life is a lie. This whole time I only had to, there's only, I've, I've been thinking there's a million random numbers in this book. There's only 200,000, which is fine. That makes my life easier. Thank you very much. I didn't need your stupid 1 million numbers anyway. Does it probably say this right in the introduction? Um, am I supposed to think of this as random numbers zero through nine? The random numbers in this book were produced by a re-randomization of a basic table generated by an electronic roulette wheel. Should, but how should I be thinking of this? Should I be thinking of the book as a million? I, I could, by the way, I can only take 200,000 members now of the coding trade. I can no longer have 1 million members. I got to read, I read the whole introduction, but like years ago. And I, it, I obviously didn't retain what's in it. And I, I don't think I could just reasonably read it right now. Um, so the question is, there are 200,000. I'm going to still consider them five-digit numbers. So for the sake of argument right now, I'm going to consider them five-digit numbers. Um, and only, um, yeah, because I want to have, I want to have 200,000 unique. Are they unique? Are all, well, let's find out. I need to find, I need to know right now if all of the numbers are unique. All of the five-digit numbers are unique. No. Well, no, they can't be. They can't be unique. They are bunched up in fives, but you can choose any number of the digits to form your own random numbers as big or small as like. That is the idea. But how do I use them? Grouping random digits zero to nine into groups of five does give you random numbers Zero to 99,999, I guess, yeah. Can you see if any of the random numbers begin with one or more zeros? They do, they do. They absolutely do. Um. 
<laughs> Chris writes, I was going to join the channel, but now that seems like rubbing it in. Right? There's no way that they're unique. But if they're not unique, how many unique ones are there? And so if you get a random number, you get it all over the book. Um, all right. We're going to keep them. We're going to keep them as five. I mean, I'm going to make a just sort of executive decision right now. The good news is my algorithm here is correct. This should give me 200,000 five digit numbers. 200,000. Perfect. So now I would like to sort this array. <laughs> um, so let's do, I for, always forget, does sorting the array actually change the array? I think it does. Random sort. Um, oh, this is more than I have time for right now. Okay, so I've sorted them. So is every number there is one question. And um, yes, every number there. I need to do like a array to set. What if you convert array to set? Oh, that's an interesting idea. Um, I was going to manually filter them myself, like into groups. Um, and uh, every number is not there. Right. If, if zero is there four times by definition, that means there's not enough space for every number. Pigeonhole principle. I've heard this term before. Pigeonhole principle. Yeah. Yeah. 10 pigeons, nine holes. Since 10 is greater than nine, at least one hole has to have. Set is actually a good idea. Okay. Uh, JavaScript set. I wanted to count how many each was in there, but that's overkill for right now. Uh, so if somebody's random, oh, that's why the column and the index of the random number is actually important. That's going to affect, ah, uh, okay. So there's still 200,000 spots if the idea is that you're getting a spot in the sequence, even if you have the same random number. Now I should try to give people unique random numbers, but if the idea is that you're getting your random walk, it's gonna be 200,000 iterations, you're getting all, okay, okay. So I'm actually not gonna worry about this right now just for a moment. That will come later. What I want to do is, um, so I'll, I'll come back to all this and it'd probably be worth making, it'd actually be worth totally making an API. Oh, here's a project for us as a coding training community. Let's make an API which has the raw text of the sequence and then you can ask it for like, give me um, 1 million numbers, random numbers zero through nine. Give me uh, 500,000 numbers zero through 19 basically. Um, so um, so that would be, that's a great, that's another project, but let me just follow this through a little bit more. So, um, so I'm gonna call this random S, which is the strings and then randoms equals random S map parse int ELT. So this should give it to me as actual numbers. Okay, so now I've got them as actual numbers and there's 200,000 of them. And what I want to do is I want the argument of the message. I want to give it a seed. So if args.length is greater than zero. So let's have let seed equal 
um, random math math dot random times randoms dot length and floor that. Then if args dot length is greater than zero, then seed equals um, parse int args index zero. You know, I should check if it, um, I'll add a to do here, to do uh, check that argument is valid number between zero and um, right 199,999 right then I'm gonna call generate image seed so we're gonna get the seed here we're not gonna do it a million times I start to zero I is less than randoms dot length and um, and then the number R is random, randoms index I plus seed modulus randoms dot length. Is that right? Let me put that in a separate variable. Index equals I plus the seed modulus randoms dot length. So this, this should pull and then this should be that number modulus four. So this should take the seed from, from any, it's not actually the seed value. I should not call it seed right now because I might want to use it as a seed eventually, but this is really starting uh, index is really what this is. And I'll just call it offset because it's really the offset, um, I plus offset. So the idea being that I'm going to always produce the same exact random number pattern um, by uh, starting at a certain number in the sequence of 200,000 numbers and then iterating over all of them from there. Um, and ultimately I could go through it twice or something, but let's see what this, let's see what this gives me. All right, so let's go to Discord. Type generate, let's see what I get. Oh, it should tell me the, shoot. So I want it also to return um, return the buffer and also, let me do this again. Um, so the attachment is, so this is, um, then I can also say buffer.index. Here's your random walk starting at index, right? That should, let me just make sure, did this work? Oh, why did I get an error there? Let's see what happens. I, got, I did get an error. Oh, we got an error, let's see. Random is not defined. Where? Ah, randoms.length. <laughs> this is a terrible name for a variable, by the way. Randoms. <laughs> Terrible name for a variable, but let's see if this works. Let's just make sure the bot is live. By the way, I hate that this is called generate. It should be called, let me rename it. Now, now is not the time. I wanna change the command to random walk or something. Generate. At undefined, good work everybody. Here's your random walk starting at Undefined. Why is that undefined? Uh, return buffer. Oh, it's called offset. Well, no wonder. I can't just make up a variable name here. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess I know what it is because I have it here. So this is silly for me to get it back. Oh yeah, I don't need to get it back. It's picked here. What am I doing? I mean, it's good. It's like, now I'm making sure it's right, but um, that was silly. Let's just do that. Okay. Here we go. Generate. <laughs> it got an error. The resource must be a string, buffer, or val, oh. 
Oh, I'm still doing this though. Ruh. Took it out of here. No, what am I doing? Where am I? Okay. Uh oh, hold on, I'm getting some messages. Breaking news here. Uh oh. <laughs> Things aren't good downstairs in baking class. <laughs> I've got to go. Okay, 8063. So here, here is the real test. Ah! That is so good. Who's Who just joined? What was Terrence's random number? Who joined? Uh... I'm still returning. Yeah. Oh, no, no. You're behind me. Chat, you're behind. I already fixed that. Um, let's just generate zero. Generate zero. Beautiful. All right. This is good. We're getting the unique pattern for any given number in the sequence of 200,000 numbers. Ah, yes. Now, if I wanted to have it be 1 million numbers, I really could. Because, um, because I only have four options for the random walker. So I guess I can make that decision later, but I want to just change a couple of things. Um, one is, um, first, uh, I don't need to do this console log anymore. Um, Loading sequence of random numbers. I So that's done. I also want to change this command to a rename. I'm going to call this random walk. And uh, update imports for random walk. I don't know. Sure, yes. Uh, what does that do? Uh, oh, it, random walk. Random walk. Okay. I think that actually should be all that I need to do to change it. I should probably put this back to only being in the bot testing channel because that's sort of the point of this particular bot. And now, hello. Oh, it's it's running. Um, choo choo. Now generate should give me nothing except it gives me an error because I don't have any error handling. It's just the worst. I thought I added error handling. Maybe there's a pull request for it. Uh, generate. Uh, so now I should be able to say random walk. It'll give me a random one. So the idea also could be that it would look up in the database my random number and give me that one. Or I could request a specific one um, by... And this should still be the same. This is still the same image as this one, right? So we're in good shape. Now, um, there also was a pull request I saw that somebody did wrap around so that it would sort of like also come maybe over here if it was going up to the top. So maybe I should add that as well, but this is good. I'm going to say, uh, get um, add, adding the random digits sequence from book. Um, I am um, finishing up, by the way, this is it. This is the end of today's live stream. I'm going to deploy this. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to um, throw caution to the wind and find the GitHub repo uh, for this particular pull request, which is now got this. I'm going to merge it. I'm gonna cancel it uh, here, it's not running. Then I'm gonna go do my ridiculous way on glitch of, whoops, of, of making the bot run. So I'm gonna go to uh, tools, import and export. Uh, and by the way, I'm never supposed, to, I should not be showing this, but I think there's enough characters <laughs> that are covered up. I suppose somebody could probably now check all the possibilities and eventually get it. Good luck to you. I'll just have to uh, delete and recreate this project or something. Um, but that's sort of a, a problem that that just shows up here. Uh, and now I'm gonna do this.
and then uh, it should be running now. Hold on. Oh, it's still like installing some stuff. Okay. Great. Hi, Code Guppy. Thank you. Very kind. Of Wait, did the 8063 look the same? It's similar. It's very similar. It's a very similar. Shape. The sequence is always the same. You have to remember that. It's just where you start. So the patterns are actually going to be quite like, like if I now, if I say random walk one, like how different is this going to be? Pretty, pretty, pretty similar. I can't even tell the difference at all. So is that a problem? <laughs> it kind of is. But I think that there's still 200,000. Like if I do 100,000, like it's going to be pretty different. Oh, sorry. Random walk. So um, maybe there's a better way to do this, to have them all be more unique. Um, but you can see that they are, they are, this one is quite different. 8,063 is not that far away from zero considering 200 pop. The sun is out. Oh my goodness. It is 3 p.m. The sun is out. I think it's over 50 degrees Fahrenheit here. Um, Code Guppy, you are much too kind. Th these donations are very, very appreciated, but definitely unnecessary. Um, it is going well. Thank you for the super stickers. And I am going to say goodbye. So I got some stuff accomplished today. Please share with me your, oh, oh, am I blowing everybody's ears out? How's the volume of that song right now? Let me know before I keep playing it. Um, um, skip digits to different, like there's all sorts of ways I could vary this, but that's kind of not the point, right? The point is we're all getting a random walk according to the book. Slight variations. Um, but it sounds like I am being called away. So um, I'm just going to like lower the volume to be safe down here. Uh, are the blondies ready? Okay, but I should stop now, huh? I'm still, I'm currently live streaming, but I'm, I'm wrapping up. All right. Um, it is beautiful outside, nice and sunny in Michigan. Are we going to go out to the park? No, I'm reading the chat. Somebody from Michigan wrote a nice message in the chat. It's, we're not in Michigan. We're in Brooklyn. All right. Um, <laughs> my children are here. They gave, they were kind enough to allow me this two hours of live streaming with you. It's actually been about two hours and 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna let this, um, yeah. Oh, Usama is saying look for a JSON file with a random 1 million numbers. I could find that, that's not the point. The point is, this is the book, the coding train Bible, so to speak, if you will. Um, this is our text, our, you know, if, if, um, and I, hopefully I'm not like by accident starting some sort of strange um, cult here, a <laughs> coding train cult. But this is this is the core text. So I want to tie everything to this book um, just for fun. Thank you, Austin. Um, oh yes, for reminding me to thank um, Brilliant, um, the sponsor. Push to get, it is pushed. Um, I'm also gonna um, unlock the bot testing channel. Uh, let me do that. Um, um, let me go to here and go to permissions and go to advanced and back to um, everyone being able to send messages, save changes, and I'm gonna leave. Um, and um, now you should be able to um, work with the bot yourself in the Discord, codingtrain.com slash Discord, link in the chat that I just posted as well. Um, thank you for telling me it was a fun stream, Jowdot. I appreciate that. I can't hear the music at all, can you? 
Um, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, there's a self-avoiding walk coding challenge that needs to come out. There are four chapter four of Nature of Code videos that are on their way. I have a little short five minute video about a template literal in JavaScript that I have not seemed to manage to produce. That has a theme song. <laughs> so that's coming out soon. And um, I will see you all maybe, so the next live stream, I mean, just check, you know, subscribe, all that nonsense stuff. Um, you know, I will say that I'm pretty low. When I look, let me pause for a second. When I look at my stats, I could, I would pull them up if I felt confident how to do that. It shows me how many people who have subscribed have notifications on and that how, and also as a percentage, how many people have notifications on as well as all notifications on for my channel. <laughs> I'm really low. Like I have a very large number of subscribers, but a really low percentage of people with the notifications on. So if you don't know about that fee, I'm not asking you to turn those notifications on if you don't want to get them. <laughs> I don't want to spam people. Um, but if you're not aware of that feature, um, I would encourage you to go and do that right now in terms of that will give you, a, certainly like when I schedule a live stream, that will then show up as a notification when I am live streaming. And then of course, when new videos are posted as well. So a little bit of plug for myself, um, you know, ring the bell, hit that bell, whatever. I mean, I, I, but but I, I, I find that the whole like, you know, it's just noise at this point if you're watching a video and somebody says, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. It's just like, it's everywhere. So, you know, I, I want to be like conscientious about asking you to do things, but I do think there might be a little bit of a disconnect <laughs> where a lot of the viewers either, maybe rightfully so, don't don't want, they want notification. And this could make sense actually. Like maybe you only want notifications from a YouTube channel that does like once a month, high quality video, 10 minutes long, well-produced. Uh, you really just want to make sure you watch their monthly 10 minute video. Whereas a coding channel might have weekly live streams, tutorials popping up every few days, and it's just a mess of notifications for you. But <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to stop talking about all of that um, and just thank all of you uh, for being here today. Uh, there's about 10 seconds left in this song. And I will see you. Um, join the Discord. I'm going to leave this chat will be open for a little bit because I'll play some outro music. So if you're not sure about how to join the Discord, how to engage with the community, how to get your notifications turned on, how to join as a member, all that stuff, you can ask it in the chat. All right. And I will see you all next time on the coding train. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot. Love you all. These P5JS hearts. Oh my goodness. I uh, I knocked over the music. As always, I always. There we go. These P5JS dot, dots dot, are a symbol dot, of my love for you, dot, the viewers of the coding this, train, this, for this, all the people this, of the this, world. This, this, Coders and non-coders alike. I see, I spy through the window there. A beautiful sunny day. I don't know what the weather is like. It might be the middle of the night for you, but take some time away from your screens, from your computers, from your coding if you can. Uh, it's hard to be with people these days, but you can be with sunshine or nature or fresh air or a book, snuggle up with a book, a painting, a drawing, something. Um, find that for yourself at least today. Thank you to um, a brilliant who is the sponsor and certainly uh, when, after you've taken your break from the computer <laughs> uh, you go, I just stopped talking goodbye I can't find the button to take me out of here I found it now never forget this dot I'm gonna do the this dot this dot this dot this dot the this dot song never forget the this dot Somebody composed that song for me. I'm going to say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward to our Jesus coordinate song. The forward to Cartesian coordinates. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me.
Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate sauce. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate sauce. I noticed people, by the way, in the chat are talking about the weather where they are, which I'm enjoying seeing as I'm kind of like cleaning up and getting things turned off here. Um, uh, and I forgot to do this at the beginning. I like to give a prompt and have everybody sort of answer the prompt in the chat. And one of the ones I usually do is just like, where are you? Where are you right now? And I don't mean like, give me your latitude and longitude, but like what country, what city are you from? Um, and Chris Sears just joined. Chris Sears, you waited, you waited till the very last moment. But now you know you will get a random number. I had to come back to give you your very own random number, Chris Sears, whose name I see quite often in the chat. And I'm glad to maybe uh, see your profile photo and see you in the Discord. Uh, we're gonna give you on page 96, row 4,770, column, one, 88,227, 88, 88, I'm going to think of these as sequences of five digits now, 88227. So the important thing is your index, right? Your index is, and we should be able to figure this out because it's 10, per, if you're in row 4770, column index one, it's the second column, zero one, that's where you are. That's the important thing. Um, and I'm seeing where people are from in the chat. Um, it, it, I, I love that. And I am going back to the last song and here it comes. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. I, I see, Chris, uh, that you were trying to fly on the It's a great message. So I have lights that blink when somebody joins. So okay, that's good. <laughs> it's very obvious to me. just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a, this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I really lose in my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens